Hey guys, welcome back to DMAC Custom YouTube channel. Uh, taking a little break from the Euro 51 today and gonna play around with some paint on some old rusty saws, like round saws, not hand saws. So, let's get at it. This way. Just stop it. I'm talking about pencils, little pencils. Check it out, got me some spectacles. This isn't a tutorial by the way, this is just, I don't know, give you something to watch while I figure out what I do on the next stage of the old Area 51. That's okay, so don't you fret. I know better than this, so honestly I do. Preparation is key, which I did very, very, very little of. Okay, so, where they are, um, got a few old saw blades hanging up on the wall there, and a few years ago I was sort of doing a bit of stuff on old, like, hand saws and things like that, and, uh, kind of word gets out and then people give you a whole bunch of hand saws, and someone found out about me painting hand saws, and their, I think it was their son works as a, um, saw doctor, and, locally here and so they had some of these old saw blades which aren't actually that old but they were past the use by on the old in the mills sort of thing so they were beyond sharpening they're still really sharp so they're pretty lethal on the old fingers if you're not careful um and they got passed on to me so i put them out the back there to cook in the weather for a couple of years and now they're nice and rusty so i'm gonna do some painting on those but i've got to kind of prep them up a little bit first and i don't know what i'm going to do yet but yeah let's let's have a look these are pretty cool um cool blades actually they kind of got these um little relief laser cut reliefs in that in them and they there to help with the the heat apparently when these things are spinning up at a zillion miles an hour cutting down logs and timber and things like that and they uh but yeah look little smiley faces and little cut scrolls already in them pretty neat hey so i'll start off with getting one of these sanded up prepped up ready to go so i just got a little bit of used piece of 320 that i'm just gonna whiz over this with it just to take the coarsest lumpiest bits of surface rust away that's about it really just makes it a little bit smoother and, and stuff and if i sometimes in the past i've like put a little coat of clear or varnish over them before I do any painting that on them where you've got a little bit more scope to wipe off any little boo-boos you might make I'm not going to do that today I'm just going to paint something on here so if I cock it up you might not even see this um, and uh, but I don't really know what I'm going to do I'll think of something anyway I'll get set up and then we'll come back just give them a quick wipe down with some wax and grease remover. Not that there's really any wax or grease on here. It just will help pick up any of the uh, like loose rust dust that I leave behind. As with all painting systems and that, preparation is key. <laughs> when you're painting over raw rust. Being that I'm painting over raw rust, that slightly distressed, unfinished look is kind of what we're look, looking for ultimately. So, might do a little DMAC Customs logo of some sort. Might just make one up to 
fit into the saw blade. Just do some lettering and pimp it out, something to hang on the wall, maybe. Alright, need a pencil. may have noticed my like little pencil and I'm always working with little pencils because of a hey, just stop it I'm talking about pencils little pencils God. I would need to go out and buy some new pencils and I haven't got around to doing that yet but this, this is essentially just like a little china graph pencil um, writes on most things glass shiny stuff rusty stuff but this is just about the end of its life. I'd rather have longer pencils, but I just haven't. I can't. I have got a long one somewhere, but I can't find it. Stop it. So, now, colours. What shall I use? Let's have a look. Check it out. Got me some spectacles. Yeah, reach a certain point in your life and you get to the point where you have to have some assistance to see properly but now this is for reading so I can't see I'm looking through there everything goes all fuzzy but it's good for like close-up stuff so I thought I'd put them on and do this hopefully it comes out better because I can see properly choice I'm using one shot enamels um, because that's apparently the industry standard for doing pinstriping and sign writing, but I'd never heard of one shot until a few years ago. But um, back when I did my sign writing apprenticeship, we used alkalite enamels like this, but they behaved pretty much the same, but they were just normal enamel. Not really sure what the difference is between one shot and normal enamel, but we painted trucks windows all sorts of stuff with just normal alkaline enamels i think that's what they're called alkaline enamels but some people call it oil base um but yeah it's just enamel paint but yeah i used one shot because i bought some a few years back and i've uh, been using it ever since because it, it comes in little tins don't need to buy a liter at a time so it's uh and it, it seems all right some colors i find better than others but yeah it's sort of but then I'm not using it every day. There's guys out there who swear by it. Some guys use Alpha 6. Some guys use um, HOK, the House of Colour stuff. Never, I've never used that. I've used a little bit of Alpha 6 and that was fine too. So I'm not really sure what the differences are. But people definitely have their preferences, especially if they're putting it under clears and urethanes and stuff. But I don't know. Quite like this colour. I'm going to do main lettering in this colour. Maybe use this second tealy colour. I quite like these two colours actually so you probably see them oh, a bit much. You get too much thinners and your paint you just tip a little bit out before you stir it in or you've got to add more to it. This isn't a tutorial by the way this is just I don't know give you something to watch while I figure out what I do on the next stage of the old Area 51. If you're interested this brush is a Hayden 200 series finest sable number seven long haired sable. Um, I've had this brush since I was about 16. Been a while, a couple of years. Yeah, let's get at it.
Okay, so a couple of little interruptions while I'm doing this little job here at Visitors and then had to pop out and get some, some food and stuff. Uh, but just thought I'd sort of talk about painting on rusty steel. Um, the paint, your brushes don't glide as well as they do on a nice surface. So I tend to thin the paint out a little bit more. So you might have seen me kind of like reworking some bits, trying to get it a bit more opaque. That's why. Um, if I use it straight out of the tin, like a lot of people do with one shot, it just grabs the rusty steel and just, just ends up, you don't get a nice smooth line. But if it's too thin, the paint does kind of walk away from the edge a little bit. So there's just a little bit of paintery information. Oh, and the other thing is, the second brush that I'm using is a Vondago lightsaber LH3. I don't know what the LH means, but these are um, Vondago Pro Series. Really good brushes if you're in the market for little scrollers and stuff. Those lightsabers are the bomb. Um, still, I think that's the first time I've actually used that particular brush, so I'm still kind of in the feel for them, but yeah, so far, so good. Okay, so that's the first colour down. Probably went a bit silly on all the scrolly stuff and my K looked more like an H, but tried to make it look more like a K again, but it's not, it's not on, not 100% on point, but that's, that's all right, I'm just having a play. If it was like for a customer or something, I probably would have pulled the plug on this and tried a little bit harder to get it all neat, but that's okay, so don't you fret. Second colour time. Gonna go with this colour here. It's called L Blue Green 150. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it yet. I just know I want to use it. Whether I do like a up the centre -y thing or whether I do a some other kind of outline y thing, maybe. But hard wet on wet trying to put stuff on up over the top, but dunno, have a look. Battery went flat. Anyway, battery went flat, so change the battery again. And kind of was just going to do some highlights. Now I'm doing a whole off the letter outline in white. Um, go busy, I guess. Anyway, carry on.
Okay, so next day, looking at my saw blade that I've been painting up and don't really like it. There's too much crap going on around it now and it's just kind of messy. Just wondering if I can save it or scrub it. I don't know. And I dropped my paintbrush on it and made a big smudgy mess and then I thinned out the paint too much in another place and made it a big smudgy mess. So, <sighs> such is life. Just wondering whether if I did a big bold black outline around the outside of it instead of the white and get rid of some of the extra squiggly bits, which I've kind of done. I've kind of put the second colour in there and to take some of the this first colour out. But still not still not sold on it. It's just kind of messy. So might try the black outline, the bold black outline, or should it have a bold white outline and then a skinny black outline? I don't know. I don't know. Just overkilled it. And some of it's alright, some of it I like, some of it's just overkilled it. But I might have a play around and bring this back into it later. This might not even make it onto the YouTube yet. <laughs> Never know. Okay, so finished beefing up the the outline, going from that skinny off the letter outline to just a bold outline around the whole whole thing. Now painting on kind of rough rusty surfaces is you're trying to get a nicer, nicer finish finish. Not I'm having trouble speaking at the moment. Uh where was I going with that? Oh, really having trouble speaking at the moment. Uh, but painting on the rusty thing, rusty saw surface uh, is kind of kind of rough, so the paint doesn't really glide that well. So well, I tend to sort of thin it down a bit, which makes it not cover very well. So, so tomorrow I might give that white another coat. Let it dry, just let it dry. Give it another coat touch up some of the tealy colours and then uh, let that dry and then I might try and do just like a fine kind of pencil black line or darker colour line separating the white and the... what is that shit called? what is this colour called? Aqua it's a one shot aqua um, using all one shot paint uh, mostly Bondago brushes, apart from one, that Pure Sable one. But yeah, so, till tomorrow. That's the second coat on the white. Um, I'm going to leave that to dry before I do any more on this and I might go through and do a few little touch-ups on the aqua colour uh, before I do the next stage. Now another little tip that I know better than this, honestly I do. Um, even with sealed tins where I've just got a little screw in the top and squeeze it out, pour it out, it still skins up in there from time to time and then you go and shake the crap out of it and 
break all that rubbish up so you end up with hopefully you can see this see those little lumpy bits in there that's just all little lumpy bits of skinned up paint uh, I really should open that up strain it and then seal it all back up again but I haven't it's only the white that's done it so far that I've found the rest of my colors the, the one shot stuff they all seem to be all right but yeah the white seems to have skinned up but that tin is getting pretty old and it's um yeah it's maybe about I don't know got about a third left in it so but it only gets used from time to time anyway so strain your skinned up paint when it gets all lumpy crap in it otherwise you'll fight it and fight it and prep your stuff up properly with anything paint preparation is key which I did very 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 little of on this little project so we'll see we'll see where it goes from here hopefully it can turn into something kind of half presentable by the end of it it'll be about this paint will be this thick though there'll be so much on there okay so back again uh decided to go with a black outline around the aqua i think it's called color and it was fighting me to be fair uh and it was all my own fault I won't blame my brushes i won't blame anything other than myself like for not prepping up my stuff properly and all those little bits of crap in the paint and dust and grit and that all come back to haunt me when i'm trying to do a nice trying being the optimum word try and do a nice line around that lettering uh so i packed this ad and packed it in the other day and left it all to dry and i uh, gave it a bit of a give it a bit of a whiz over with some 320 just to take the tops off all of that crap just to try and get it out of my way so i could um try and do a better line a bit of painting sort of thing i should know better like this is golden rule number one preparation is key sort of thing but here i was just in a hurry for no reason i was just rushing but anyway i'm going to carry on try and get this thing lined up and touch a few little things up and then that should pretty much be it if i can get it done nicely yeah okay update with that little sand seems to be lining a little bit nicer okay did that little bit there might if i get it in the edit there's like about a thousand hours of footage on on this uh saw blade uh but my battery ran out no my sd card filled up and my battery nearly ran out i think so carry on even recording I don't must have switched it off anyway I thought I was recording and being all clever I probably just missed a whole bunch of stuff um, all my black outline on there now some of it's pretty rough to be fair it is pretty rough and just a whole raft of preparation errors and technique errors and stuff on my part a little out of touch with doing some of these long scrolly curves trying to line them as yeah, next level and on a rough surface which i should have as i said earlier possibly um should have actually sanded it all up and maybe cleared it or something got a nice nicer surface to to paint on than trying to paint straight onto a rough rusty steel uh, but it's gonna be a 10 footer you know yeah, still can't really read it but that's all right that was a six footer so should be all good i'm gonna leave that to dry now and then um maybe tomorrow come through and just touch up some little bits and pieces and then i might call that uh goose cooked maybe yeah okay okay so you might have seen during that last but hopefully if it actually did record i'm not sure at this point um me kind of getting down over the top like 
and kind of working within my shadow in the dark, basically. I actually found it slightly easier to see what I was doing. I wasn't getting all the glare back from the gloss of the paint kind of messing with the eyes. But um, yeah, so that's why I was doing that. But kind of, yeah, if you're working on a, a vertical surface, it might be a bit different depending on how your area is lit up. But this is how my area is lit up from straight above, and I was getting lots of glare. Couldn't see a thing, even with my new spectacles on. And so, yeah, I found working over the top of my light, my piece here, my saw, and getting in my own shadow, I could see slightly better. How about that? Anyway, let this all dry off and come back through tomorrow and do some touch-ups and clean up some bits and pieces. But don't really like touching up um, enamel paints, but you know, ideally you kind of get it all wet and flows and stuff like that. But I'm this is just this is just rough. This is just for fun. So I'm going to touch it up just for my own peace of mind, and make some things look a little bit nicer. Hopefully. Either that or I'll just be putting more paint on top of rough stuff and making it rougher. We'll see tomorrow. But yeah, like I say, from a distance, it's not too bad. Alright, next day, just going through doing a few little touch-ups on the aqua colour. Uh, in a perfect world, I wouldn't be touching this up, but since I'm not perfect, I've got to touch this up to get me somewhat more happy with it. Um, but yeah, not too much, just straightening a few things up and stuff like that. But yeah, nearly there. Well, guys, that's it. Touched up, oh, upside down. Um, there's the finished lettering. Still undecided as to whether I might put a little bit of um, just some clear alkali varnish or something over the top of it. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. It's not all glary. Hopefully it's glary enough that it hides all my really, really bad bits. Uh, so, went through, did some touch-ups. As you saw, if I put it in, um, made some stuff better and made some stuff worse so go figure uh, but for what it is it's fine like if it was some fancy hot rod truck door I probably would be doing this in a whole different way um, but for just playing around on a rusty old saw without doing any proper prep on it it kind of worked out alright I guess uh, it, it is what it is okay don't go coming up in the comments going all nutty about how i should have done this should have done that should have done this should have done that just having a little bit of fun okay just... okay gopros switching off all the time for no apparent reason but it is what it is it's just having to play around with some paint on a rusty old saw with really no prep other than sanding the worst of the rust lumpy stuff off and not cleaning it off and creating a dust-free environment to do this in and not straining my paint and making all these real rookie mistakes that I should know better. To be fair, I should know better. Um, but anyway, so there it is. Touched up. I'll hold it far enough back that hopefully you won't see the real bad stuff. But yeah, see? Little DMAC Customs saw. Uh, I might varnish it yet. Just put a little bit of, like, just varnish over it and to even it out. Or may even kind of chuck a bit of rough it up i don't know maybe not probably just i'm over it now i'll just hang it on the wall somewhere dark um and yeah so that's it for this video just killing time while i figure out what to do next on the old area 51 project um i did get these 
little clippy things in for my seats so I can do them all proper like not all zip tie and twisted bits of TIG rod and stuff um, so I'll get on to that at some stage don't know whether I'll put that on video that's just gonna make me like fumbling around with some pliers trying to squeeze up some clips but um, yeah so that's it for this video anyway so uh, as always thanks for watching uh if you got this far i don't know how this edit's going to go because i got like i don't know hundreds of hours in this stupid little saw um thanks for watching thanks for subscribing if you haven't done so already get on to that and until next time take it easy peace also i forgot to mention i got three more of these things uh looking for ideas on what to paint on them, got any suggestions, um, I'll take a little bit more care and prep them up proper, kind of-ish, probably not, um, I'll sand them again and I might clear them first, so just to make my shit a little bit smoother to work on when I do that, um, but any suggestions on what would be cool to do, could do the old two cent paddy removal thing, or could do grandpa's garage or something like that, or could just do some scrolly stuff, I don't know, any suggestions though? down below in the suggestion box. Cheers. Okay, see ya.